Hi one and all and welcome to today's foray through a little bit more of Method 3 and 4 and some A-level stuff if you're over there in the United Kingdom and some algebra if you're over there in the United States. Today we're dealing with types of functions and implied domains. Sounds so much fun, doesn't it, really? Uh, yeah, I know. Grab a cup of coffee, because I think you're probably going to need it. Or a cup of tea, uh, if you are from the United Kingdom, with a rich tea biscuit. Now, if you are new to my channel, I promise you I haven't lost it. I just think maths should be enjoyed and fun and interesting and funny. And hopefully, a little bit later on, there will be some sort of reference or to the movie It. Yes, I know. How on earth can a horror movie relate to types of functions in implied domains? Good question. Now, if you are new, do me a favor. There is an arrow over there saying, show me your support. Uh, and if you click that, you'll actually uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, as I say every single video, uh, and it's very needy, um, I do this for absolutely nothing, really. Uh, I'm never going to get any uh, riches or, in fact, probably any monetization of this. So please, I'm just doing it for fun. But it's nice to know you're watching. So if you can click that for me, it would be greatly appreciated. Now, you've sort of clicked in to go, well, what are you actually going to be dealing with, you English uh, individual? By the end of this lesson, I'm hoping that you'll have understood how to test and classify functions. Now, we've done a bit of this in a previous video, and if you haven't seen it, it was a stunner. It was, it was absolutely awesome, he says, pulling his collar as if to say awesome. And I looked a little bit at one-to-one -one functions. This one's going to look at many-to-one -one functions, odd functions, even functions. We're going to look at knowing what an implied domain is. Uh, and again, Barry has been at it in full force. And again, no more Barry hashtag. And uh, want to know what a piecewise function is as well as some of the biggest tricks in function notation. Now, as I say in the recap, we've looked at what a function is. And if you remember, there is a difference between a relation, of which all equations are relations. A function has to pass the vertical line test. And a one-to-one -one function is a function that passes a horizontal line test. And it's, you know, people go, well, what's this all got to do with maths? And, and why do I need to all this stuff? Well, for those of you over here in Australia, I can't tell you any more uh, urgently or importantly that everything you are dealing with in this course relates to graphs. If you can look at a function and know what a graph looks like, I promise you, and, I, I, and by that I mean in your head, then you are almost, you know, 30, 40% of the way there. Because the algebra we teach you, the math we treat you, be it calculus or, I don't know, a little bit of trig or, or, or any, any order of the math we're about to do, is all repetitive so long as you know what a graph looks like. So I've given a couple of examples here, and this is really taken from year 10. Um, I've just taught this to my year 10s. Now you guys are two years further advanced that. You've done methods one and two. You've probably done pure in uh, A-level. You've probably done pure in, uh, you know, in algebra in, in, in America. But here we go. Here are two forms of equations. One, minus two, uh, open bracket, x plus three squared minus three, and this one here. Now, if you're not sure about that second one and why it looks that way, well, that's function notation. Previous video talks all about it. Really important to be able to understand what that function notation is. But when you look at this first equation here, this y equation, are you aware that that is a quadratic that has been shifted three units to the yet yeah, left so it's been moved three units to the left it's been dilated away from the x-axis by a factor of two it's been flipped and then it's been shifted three units down now probably not in that order because again if you've watched things we know that there is an order called dr t dilations reflections and translations unless the question tells you otherwise so just by looking at that equation i don't know what it's going to ask me to do but i know it's a quadratic what about this equation here well it's got a g in it doesn't matter, we can define functions with F's and G's and H's and R's and S's and T's. Really doesn't matter, but here we know that this is my domain. We know that whatever happens, this function that we're going to look at is only uh, going to exist between 0 and 2 pi. It's mapped onto real. Don't care what that means, I promise you, just not interested. And here is my actual function, 3 cosine 2 open bracket x plus 3 on 2 minus... Th what does it mean? Well, again... I can look at this now and go, okay, it's a cosine curve. It's got an amplitude of three. It's been stretched by three. It's been squidged in by two. So its period has been halved. All these words are important. It's been translated uh, to the, well, positive means it's gone to the left. So it's been translated to the left, three pi on two, and then the whole graph's been moved down by three. Knowing this stuff is actually critically important. Um, so again, another quick recap on what a one-to-one -one function is. And as I said, a one-to-one -one function is used to help us find inverse functions. 
A lot more to come on that in a later video, but if we want to know whether a function is one-to-one, -one, then we just simply draw a horizontal line through it. If it crosses that function, or sorry, that relation more than once, then it is not one-to-one, -one, all right? So this here, this y equals x squared, it is absolutely a function, because if I draw a vertical line through it, in anywhere along that function, it will only ever cross once, but if I draw a horizontal line, it crosses more than once. This one here, if you remember then, is a one-to-one -one function. If I draw a horizontal line, it cuts once. If I draw a vertical line, it cuts once. So it's a function and it's one-to-one. -one. But why is only part of it there? Where's the rest of the graph? Well, as I said in my previous video, we can limit the domain. We can look at just certain sections of the graph to actually turn it from a non-one-to-one -one function into a one-to-one -one function. And these two here are actually the same graph. They are both y equals x squared. This one is the full y equals uh, x squared graph. And this one here, I said, I only want the values between zero and four for that graph, which has turned it into a one-to-one -one function. Now, inverse is a really, really important. Us, but math is a trick. And I suppose you should be able to look at the two graphs I've just given you there and gone, are they one-to-one -one functions? Well, remember, when I draw a horizontal line, it is only allowed to cross through once. So this one's fairly obvious. Lots of people look at that one and go, yeah, yeah, nah, it crosses twice. And in which case, then it is not a one-to-one -one function. But what about this one here? Well, it's a huge trick. Think about it. If I draw a horizontal line through that function, at the moment we have this as y equals five. If I draw a horizontal line through my function, how many times is it gonna cross? And in fact, it's gonna cross an infinite number of times. Yep, see what that is? It's a ridiculous trick. Now you might be looking at this going, well, that was really easy. Yes, it is. But in the heat of an exam, not necessarily so easy when they're trying to trick you. Now, what about this many to one function? We've talked about one to one functions. And at this moment in time, all you need to be able to do is identify which function is one to one. And mainly that's by just drawing that horizontal line. A many to one function, as it says here, a many to one function is when a y value has multiple x values. So if we go back to this example here, if I cross this line through and put a horizontal line through the point three, what do I notice? Well, my y value is three, but I have how many x values? Two. So that there, that half a circle or whatever you want to call it is a perfect example of uh -huh, a many to one function. We don't really see too many of those in maths. Um, I'm just throwing it in there for complete list. Now, Barry has been at it again. Hashtag no more Barry. Why? Because he's once again come up with this random term called an implied domain, which is also said, you know what, let's throw in a curveball. Let's not just call it an implied domain. Let's call it a maximal domain too. They mean the same thing. Barry, quit it, dude. All right, so basically he has come up with this term and they use it in exam questions over here in Australia. And they'll say, state the implied domain. And people go, <laughs> An implied domain is what is your best understanding of the domain of the function if it's not written down. Now, if I go back up here to that cosine one that we dealt with a moment ago, sorry about the scrolling, guys. I know some of you go motion stick. But we've given the domain here. So for that particular example, I don't care what the implied domain is. I just know that the domain is 0 and 2 pi. I don't care anything else. But what about if I was just talking about a cosine curve? Yes, what if I was talking about just a sine curve? Well, if I was looking at a sine curve and we have an idea of how it looks, and again, I come back to that idea of knowing how it looks, then I know that that sine curve goes from infinity to beyond, or in fact, from infinity to minus infinity. And so our implied domain for a sine curve is actually all real values, which we can write as minus infinity to infinity. So an implied domain is, if I haven't told you what the domain is, can you tell me what the domain for the whole function is? Yeah, you gotta learn these. All right, so y equals x squared. What would the implied domain be for y equals x squared? Well, ask yourself the question, are there any x values that you can't put in and square them? No, every single number known to man can be squared. And so again, the implied domain for this would be all real. Or, if I wanted to write it in interval notation, minus infinity to infinity. See how this is? Yeah? And maximal domain is the same. Now, another function that you're going to come up with in methods is this one here called uh, the, root, the square root of x. Now, we know that you cannot square root negative numbers. 
unless you're specialist and that's an imaginary number and I've got enough imaginary friends in my life, so let's just chill with this one here. So the fact of it is, we know that for the graph of the square root of x, which I have sketched for you here beautifully, if I do say so myself, actually has an implied domain from, and this is x, is from zero to infinity. Now it includes zero because we can have the square root of zero. We can have the square root of any number from zero to infinity, yes? But we cannot have any negative values in this. So in this situation, my implied domain, my maximal domain would be zero to infinity. And writing this as function notation, that's what we would end up with. All right, see what we're doing here? Again, I can't do too many examples because they're all in the theory. What about piecewise functions? Now, I don't know about you, but I was terrified when I used to sit. Well, actually, I'm a great Stephen King fan. And what did I do? I picked up the It book and I read the book cover to cover. And for the whole thing, my heart was beating, pounding like you wouldn't believe, until I got to the end. Now, I won't ruin it because they've remade It and a bit of it's shown me behind. And that guy is seriously creepy. No word of a lie. Seriously creepy. If I saw that in a sewer, I wouldn't go anywhere near it. I don't care how old I was. I'd run for the hills. Raining? Little paper boat? Not interested. But the point of it is... Um, I don't want to ruin the film, um, but when I see piecewise functions, I think of that dude, that Pennywise the Clown thing. All right, I'm going to wake up screaming on a sleeper tonight. Ooh. Anyway, but thankfully, uh, piecewise functions have nothing to do with clowns hiding in sewers and everything to do with this thing here. Now, generally speaking, if I had y is equal to x squared, we would know that we can plot all of that on a graph beautifully. It would, yeah, 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 lovely. But not all functions, not everything we do in real life happens to fall with just one curve. There might be situations where, uh, probably inappropriate to talk about this on a video, but I know in, in Melbourne there's something called, a, uh, I think it's a vodka bar. Uh, okay, and you're way too young to drink and I'm way too old to even consider the idea of alcohol. But, but the, the idea is that the more people who buy a particular brand of vodka, the price starts to go up. And as the price of one goes up, the price of something else comes down. So what they try and do is they shift supply and demand. So the more people who drink one particular vodka, the price starts to go up, so another one starts to drop. Well, that could be very much modeled by different equations on the same graph. And that's effectively what a piecewise function is here. So let's look at the function notation first. And zooming in behind me, the first thing is we have three separate functions being shown here. So on my big graph, on my overall graph, there are going to be three different sections. One section is going to show the graph of y equals minus x minus 1. Now, this bit at the end here is critically important because what it's telling you is that is only true for x values less than 0. All right, okay, so visualizing my graph, that's basically saying any, any negative x values, that's my equation. The second line says, right, okay, so the next part of my graph is going to be described by 2x minus 1. All right, so a different straight line graph. So the middle part of this graph is going to be a straight line with the equation 2x minus 1, but it's only going to be valid for all values between 0 and 1 and including 0 and 1. And then finally, y equals a half of x plus a half for all values when x is greater than 1, not including 1. We've already got that in here. Yes? When we then use something like Desmos or I used f of x, this is what comes up. All right, so these arrows here at the end of each of those lines suggest that for those particular parts of the function, it goes to infinity and beyond, okay? So they just go on. The filled in dot here says that actually they meet. It's included at that point or one of those points is included. Uh, I'm a little bit confused as to why that isn't colored in because if I put one, into this function. If I put 1 into my second function, I get 2 times 1 minus 1, which is 1. And if I put 1 into this function, I also get 1 out. So actually, at that point, the graph is actually connected, and both of those functions include that point. So we should ideally color that point in. I've obviously entered it in incorrectly, but do you see what's happened there? It's one graph that contains three different functions. That's what a piecewise function is. You'll get a lot of those in methods, yeah? And one of the most important ones is coming up in a later video. But again, I don't want to rush ahead. Again, do you notice this is all terminology? It's all stuff you seem to need to know. And yes, once you've got it in there and you start using it throughout the rest of the course, you're done. It's brilliant. It's, life is so much easier. 
Now, odd and even functions, and there's a, a fabulous TV program, uh, undoubtedly when my mum and dad were young, uh, called The Odd Couple. Again, section of it shown behind. It, it apparently was really, really funny. It was about two guys living together. I know, very progressive for that period of time. But anyway, we, we won't get too caught up in that conversation. But it was funny, um, but again, nothing to do with maths. I don't know why I keep doing this. It just comes into my head. So you need to understand the definition of what an odd function is. Now, the first thing I'm going to say to you is, graphically, I think it makes more sense when I look at it graphically. And an odd function is a function that when I rotate it through 180 degrees, will look exactly the same. Now, if we go back to something I've just been teaching my year eight, <laughs> orders of rotational symmetry, what that suggests is order two rotational symmetry. It looks the same face up as it does 180 degrees, as it does back to the very beginning. And the graph here, which is x cubed minus x, a pretty standard graph to use, gives that example perfectly. If you took the screen or whatever you're watching this on and turn it upside down and make sure you've got rotation lock on, it will look exactly the same. Now, obviously, mathematically, Barry wants to try and confuse us, and he's come up with this section here that says, well, to define an odd function, we know that the function of minus x is equal to minus the function of x. So what I'm saying is, if I had the f of minus 1, it has to be equal to the f of 1. See what I'm doing there? So when I look at my graph, is the y value when I put 1 in the same as the y value when I put minus 1 in? And if I look at that on my graph, there is minus 1, there is 1, and they are exactly the same value. Um, again, it's really hard because I don't have a lot of the graph on here. But throughout that graph, that's what it means. So that's an odd function. Then we get to even functions. And even functions are fabulous in the sense of that these have nothing to do with rotation and everything to do with reflection. So what happens is if you can reflect the graph in the y-axis and it is exactly the same, then it is an even function. And a great example of this, for those of you who remember uh, the trig stuff, is the cosine curve. Yes, because the cosine curve, if I was to reflect it in the y-axis, would end up looking exactly the same, but the sine curve would not. So, an even function, this is an example of an even function, y equals x squared minus 2. Flip my calculator, sorry, flip my screen, and it will look identical. Barry wants us to make sure that we have an algebraic reference to prove this, and what he says is, as it says there, the f of minus x must be equal to the f of x. So, Making x equals 2, for example, it says the f of minus 2 must be equal to the f of 2, i.e. the y value when I put 2 in must be the y value when I put minus 2 in. So here's 2, there is my 2, here's minus 2, and it just so happens they both share the same y value. I will promise you, in a week's time, I will completely forget the definition of odds and even functions. It just doesn't go in my head. Don't know why, it just doesn't, but hopefully yours it will. Now, one more thing. When I was in my very first school, so many of my kids lost marks in their final VCE exam because they really hadn't twigged one thing. Now, it wasn't that I hadn't taught it, I promise you, I put my hand up, I taught it over and over again. They just didn't get it. And what it was, was the fact of, if I have this notation here, if I have f of x, is equal to 3x squared minus 2x plus 1, and they ask you to find f of 3, what is it they're asking you to do? Well, they're actually just asking you to substitute the value of 3 as x. So had my kids done this and worked it out, I promise you they would have got all of their marks. And sadly, I even got mentioned in an examiner's report, which was a little bit embarrassing, but not by name. But I knew it was me. It was so hurtful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this video. No recap today because uh, my battery is running out on my phone. So I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. I am the Maths Guru. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe by clicking that circle there. Come on and get out there and tell your friends if you'd be so kind. Uh, I just need to know that people are watching. Um, otherwise, yep, I'm done. There's a video over there loading for you. Um, this is Maths Guru out next time. Bye-bye.